Well, hello again, everybody. It's Rob from PMDG back with another episode, episode 10 of our Small Bites series for the 737. This episode's all about failures. When you flip a switch or twist a knob in a PMDG or plane, you, we're not just setting a status light or turning something on or off for you. We're actually running an entire simulation of the associated components and subsystems on the airplane. It takes place in real time. It uses the actual logic chains of systems, actual relays, components, temperatures, pressures, things of that nature. All of that is simulated in order to drive what is eventually an indication to you in the flight deck of the airplane. Of course, when you model something down to this level of detail, it would be a shame to also not model what happens when things don't work properly. And that's what the failure system is all about. Failures are unique to each individual airframe, just like the other things we've been talking about. So we're going to go into the PMDG setup menu first. We're going to go into aircraft, and then we're just going to move right down to the failures menu, and this will take us where we want to be. Failures in the PMDG airplane are grouped by component. So you can see we've got four pages here showing you the group categories for each failure that you might be able to trigger. There are hundreds of them, and they're grouped into 18 or so categories to make them easier for you to find. Back here on page one, at the very top of the page, you'll see that there is a grayed out item here saying active none. If there is anything that has failed, it will show you that there are active failures there. Down here, you've got your subcomponent selection. We'll go into the APU for now. And we're going to use this as our chosen menu to describe how to fail a specific subcomponent on the airplane. You'll notice that the component name is here at the top, and then we've got programmed failures. This will allow you to choose which failure. We've also got random failures that will let the airplane choose which failure you experience. We've got service-based failures. We're going to cover that in a separate topic in just a couple of moments. So let's go into program failures. You can see that there are two types of failures that you can have with the APU. You can have the APU bleed error, which is what we're going to focus on. Now, to fail a component within the APU bleed error, all you have to do is, on this one left line select key here, tap that and set it to yes, and that will fail the APU bleed system. The other thing you can do is you come down here and press armed. If you set that to yes, it's going to activate all of these menus right here. And we can then set we want this failure to happen so that it's armed to happen, say, in two hours. We hit the illuminated execute key, or we can just simply tap the armed button again to turn it all off, and you'll notice that it grays this back out to tell us it's not going to happen. We can also turn the failure on instantly by just pressing the active button. We can flop that back and forth. If we want to erase our changes, just hit the erase button on the lower left, and it will clear everything out you can tell that it's cleared it out because it sets all these back to zeros. Okay, so now we're going to back out. We're going to take a look at random failures. Random failures make this all a little bit more fun. You can obviously program a specific failure to happen whenever you want it to, but you know, having things happen randomly is a little bit more interesting. So go into the random failures, just set it to yes. Now we have to define how we want that to happen. We provide a statistical method that's based upon a 10 hour cycle. So you tell it how many times do you want this to fail on an average 10 hour cycle. Now this doesn't mean you're going to get the failure every five hours. It means that it will happen twice in a 10 hour period. You might get them two minutes apart or they might happen nine hours and 59 minutes apart but you'll get two within a 10 hour period on a statistical average. Now you can also limit the number of times it will fire by setting limited events to yes. So in this case we would have on average the failure would happen every five hours but it would only happen once. If it fires it's done it's gonna stop trying to give this to us over and over again. Then to make it all work we just press the illuminated execute button here or we can back out of it by pressing erase, whichever suits our needs. So now that I've showed you how to fail an individual component, 
I'm going to show you how to fail components and then also clear them back out. We're going to do that using a battery charger failure. So we'll set the failure active and then press the execute button so that the battery charger has now failed. You'll notice when we look at the electrical failures menu, we can see that the main battery charger fail is highlighted in red. Anything that's highlighted in red indicates that there is a failure of that component or somewhere in that menu. Of course, we could just tap on it. We see right there that it's failed. We can turn it off, hit execute, and now our battery charger is back online. See? Cheap and easy. All right. Now we can go back in. We're going to go fail that battery charger one more time so that we can show you where else you can clear out this failure. We'll go ahead and back out to the top menu now. And you can see that electrical is highlighted in red, indicating that there is a failure somewhere in the electrical system. Also, we can back out to the top of the failures menu, and it's going to show us that there is one active failure, and it's highlighted in red, indicating that there is a failure someplace. And if we want, we can then drill down into those menus and start searching around until we find things that are highlighted in red so that we know that they've failed. And then we can also go into those components and press on the failure button to clear them if we like. But there's also a much more efficient way. You've probably noticed that we gave you a maintenance item right here. If you click on that, you can go in and clear the active failures within the electrical subcomponent. You can also back all the way out and click right here where it says active failures highlighted in red. You'll see that the main battery charger fail is highlighted in red as a part of a list of failed items and you can fix everything at once just by clicking clear all right here and then hitting execute and that will fix anything that's broken on the airplane at that point. Now let's do a live fire exercise just so you can kind of see how this all ties together with setting failures and then also clearing them. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in and we're going to fail a battery charger and come in here and do it. And just for fun, listen as the battery charger fails, you'll actually hear Did you hear that? It went offline. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so now we're just say we're sitting here in the airplane and we didn't know that that was supposed to happen. We look up, we see we've got an electrical light here, and oh geez, the amps are really coming out of that battery, so there must be a battery charger failure. Now we could glance right back down at our menu here, and sure enough, the component failure is telling us that it's offline, or we could come back up here to the electrical panel since we're really smart pilots and we could check and make sure that Paul, our chief mechanic, is not around and then use the maintenance function without his supervision in order to take a look and diagnose the problem ourselves. Something that pilots really aren't supposed to do, but we're smart, so we're going to do it. All right, so we can see that the battery charger is in-op and it's being reported to us by the built-in test system in the electrical control panel. So we come back down here. We could clear it just by setting this to no if we wanted to, but there's another way as well, and that takes place way up here in the maintenance menu. We can just hit clear active and hit execute, and now that problem is completely gone. And we can tell it's gone because when we come back up to the top of the failures menu, this is grayed out. It says active, none, and that's how we know that there are no more failures on the airplane. So now that I've showed you how to set and clear individual failures, go ahead and click on the failures menu right here, and then we're going to look in all systems. What I'm going to show you is how to really leverage the failures simulation system inside the PMDG 737 to make your flying a lot more interesting. It's one thing to turn on individual failures, turn them on and off, but it's something else to do random failures right here. You can turn random failures on by simply hitting yes and then hitting the illuminated execute button down here. Again, we've got events per 10 hours and this is the statistical basis that we use. So this allows you to tell the simulator, hey, give me this many events every 10 hours on average. 
So again, we'll set two here. That means on average, about every five hours, we should see a failure of some sort get triggered. Doesn't mean it'll happen at five hours. It just means that on average, you're gonna get about one every five hours. So we could get two in the first half hour and then get none for the next nine hours and 30 minutes. It just depends. But let's play around and say we were gonna have 10. So on average, we'd expect to get a failure about every hour. But we also didn't want to abuse ourselves. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use the limited events function here in order to limit the number of events that the simulation can throw at us during any flight cycle. So for example, if we wanted to have a fairly active failure structure of one event per hour, but we didn't want to get one every hour, we only wanted say two per flight or one per flight, we could then turn on limited events, set it to one event limit, and we would have a rate of about one per hour, but we'd only get one event per flight. So this allows you to really leverage how you want the failures to be thrown at you so you can have a very active failure period or you can dial it way back so that you don't. It's entirely up to you. If we set this to three, for example, we could expect that on an average flight of about an hour, we would see three failures because we've got 10 events per 10 hours, and that comes out to about one, and we've got the event limit set to three. So we would only see three failure events on any given flight. So they would happen fairly rapidly, but we wouldn't get overwhelmed if we were flying a great distance. So you can see we've got a lot of flexibility here in how we set it up to work with us. Of course, the events that it chooses is entirely at its own discretion, and it is statistically based, so they will be almost entirely randomized. Now, we can turn that off, and I'm going to show you the real crown jewel of our failure system. You'll notice that at line three here, we have service-based failures. It's currently turned off, so let's go ahead and turn that off. What are we turning on? Well, service-based failures in the PMDG 737 is a simulation of the statistical values that the airline industry has accumulated to determine when they can expect components to fail on board an airplane of this type. So for example, every component on the airplane has a known mean time before failure associated with it. And we have created a simulation using those times in order to provide you with an accurate level of dependability for the airplane that you're flying. So if it's known that a specific sensor or valve or relay or pump might fail after a certain number of hours, statistically you are going to see the same failure rate as an airplane in the global service fleet. And coupled with that we've got a maintenance menu here and if you go into the maintenance menu we've already used this top function here to clear active failures. That will clear any failure that is already triggered. Clear all will clear any failure that's also armed to fail. But then down here, we've got next service in, and it tells you how many hours you have to fly until the airplane's next service check. And when you get to that figure, you come in here and you press the service all button, and that will provide the routine maintenance services that are required throughout the airplane in order to keep it operating reliably in service. If you fail to perform those service calls, the wear and tear level on the airplane will accelerate and you'll start to see failures more often. Now, you're going to see failures no matter what. It's a machine and machines break. But do pay attention to the service call times here because you'll want to make sure that your airplane gets serviced. I also want to take this time to call your attention to something else. In the PMDG 737, we have ground maintenance. And ground maintenance performs a couple of functions in order to keep the airplane healthy from an operational standpoint. You can see here we can service hydraulic fluid, engine oil, you can reset the uh, EGT warning sensors if the engines were over temped, you can refill the fire bottles, refill oxygen bottles. On the next page we've got functions here to cool the brakes if you overheated them, replace the brakes if you've worn them out, replace the tires if you've had a tire failure, you can also reconnect a disconnected integrated drive generator. 
you can uh, also service the APU SCU motor, so if your APU won't start, check there. These ground maintenance functions are the sorts of things that you would get done during a turn through, say, one of your airline's hubs or maintenance stations, just to keep the airplane operating reliably in service. Now, oftentimes after people overtemp the brakes during a rejected takeoff, they'll come in here and they'll replace the tires because the tires went flat, and then they'll cool the brakes and maybe they replace the brakes, and then they're mystified by why they can't seem to get a set of tires that aren't flat. Well. We recommend that you go from top to bottom here. Cool your brakes, replace your brakes, replace your tires. Because if you replace the tires first and you've still got hot brakes, you're just going to melt the new set of tires, and those are expensive. You don't want to do that. All right, that covers the failures control system for the PMDG 737. We hope you liked it, hope you learned something, and we hope you actually use it. It actually makes flying the airplane a lot of fun because it behaves a lot more like a real-world machine when it doesn't work perfectly all the time. That's all for now. We'll talk to you soon.